What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Scott Proctor. Joining us always by Matt Morris. We're back with another episode of Simple Question, but this time we'll have more than one because we got a special guest joining us today for the first time. He's been an NFL reporter and insider for over 20 years from ESPN to Sirius XM, co-host of the Inside the Birds Philadelphia Eagles podcast. It's Adam Kaplan. Adam, thanks so much for joining us today, my man. How are you doing? Guys, good to be with you. Yeah, we're, we're, we're on the precipice of super wild card weekend. We've got oh, yeah. coaching searches going on, so... Lots to talk about. Absolutely. You mentioned coach coaching searches. Let's start right there because we got a few vacancies already for NFL head coaches. I want to start here and ask you this. Which team without a head coach currently has the most attractive job to a potential head coach? It's, it's probably the number one question to me when, when I get involved with coaching searches and reporting and so forth and gathering the information. I ask coaches, front office people, people around the league, hey, what do you think of this one? What do you think of that one? Uh, the one that keeps coming up is the Panthers. Yes, they, they don't have their starting quarterback for next year, but they know that's their number one need. They have an outstanding defense. There's no question. Uh, they've extended a lot of key players' contracts with both sides of the football. You love that. That's huge for an incoming you know, head coach that you don't have to worry about your key players walking. It's just, they just got to get the quarterback. That That's the most attractive. Now, as we speak here, we don't know what Sean McVay is going to do, so we have to see that, that we sort of change the paradigm. The Panthers, I would say. Now, you could say, well, what about Denver with Russell Wilson? Well, that's the problem. Could Russell Wilson carry over his late season run where, let's 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 face it, for 14 games a season, he was well below average. That That's the problem with that job. But I would say of all of them, the Panthers right now looks like the best one. Interesting. Yeah, I like that take. And, I mean, the defense definitely speaks for itself when you got guys like Brian Burns and, and some of those guys they have over there. Uh, but, Adam, Speaking of Super Wild Card uh, weekend, a uh, lot of teams coming in with uh, some big pressure on them. Who do you think has uh, the most pressure, whether it's a player, a coach, or a team, uh, to get the win this weekend? I would say probably Brandon Staley, the Chargers head coach. Mm. It We know about the Sean Payton rumors were out there. In fact, talking to coaching uh, agents back in September, actually two of them mentioned this to me, that a situation to watch would be, Watching Sean Payton, who's working for Fox out in L.A., I know, I know for a fact he's got family out there. And typically, when you you're someone like Sean Payton, you like to who's been around for a long time. You probably like to walk in where you you know who your quarterback's going to be and who better than Justin Herbert. But those rumors you could put them to sleep now because they did make the playoffs, the Chargers. But look, if 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 the Chargers lose, and it, it's the toughest game to pick, let's face it, of, of the of the six, it's extremely difficult. It could go either way. If they lose. Will the pressure be on Brandon Staley next year? I would say absolutely it would be because, look, the, you, you got to win in L.A. They're, they're trying to win fans there. The Rams won the Super Bowl last year. So I would say if we had to narrow it down, I would say Staley won and probably Todd Ball's number two. I think I would personally have to throw Mike McCarthy in there. I think a loss with the yeah. way they looked in the regular season finale, if they were to lose a wild card game against a below 500 Tampa Bay Buccaneers, even with Tom Brady at the helm, I think that would throw in even more questions, Mike McCarthy's future in Dallas. But let's talk a little Fair. bit more about yep. this weekend, Super Bowl card weekend. What do you think is the most competitive game of the weekend? There's a handful of ones oh. that I have an eye on. What do you think is the most juiciest matchup we'll see this uh, I would say Chargers Jaguars, where it, it it's the line I think is very fair. It could go either way. And then I like your point of Mike McCarthy. Still a twelve and five team, very well coached. Jerry Jones, for all the negativity about he's not patient, look, look, he kept Jason Garrett around a lot longer than people expected. I know that he knew Garrett when Garrett was a backup quarterback for Troy Aikman, so they had a they had a personal relationship for went well over twenty years, probably over twenty five years. But so Jerry's been pretty patient. We know that he's very close to Sean Payton, so that's that. The rumor is always going to be out there, but that I understand why the Cowboys are favorite, and I know the games at Tampa. The Cowboys are clearly the better team, have a roster. The, the Bucks come in a little bit banged up physically on defense, and the, particular in the secondary, that will worry me. Uh, that one, that one's a kind of a, a, a tough game to pick. I'd certainly lean towards the Cowboys. What I find interesting, the spread in the Giants uh, Vikings game, I think, is the same as it was the first time around. Or it wound up only being, a, what was it, 27-24. The Vikings were able to win, but the Giants almost had, they were close to 500 yards in total offense. But I would say the Cowboys have the best chance to win because they're clearly the better team where, I, just talking to, to uh, teams that have played the Vikings, some coaches who, who I really trust, they think they're well coached. They certainly can put up a lot of points, but they, they, they have real issues with the Vikings secondary, which has given up a ton of production. 
and I love the way the Giants coach. They, they've clearly overachieved. The roster isn't that good, folks. Let's let's call it like it is here. I, I'm I'm probably going to pick the Giants in that game. I, I know the spread's only three, so clearly uh, Las Vegas I, I think it has it right. But would it surprise anyone that, that the Giants go in there and not only give them a game but take this one here? Look, let's not forget this is a Vikings team that was down 33 to nothing and the best comeback in NFL history. They could score. There's no question. I just don't think their defense is good enough. No doubt. I want to stay here on the Giants, Adam, before we talk a little bit about the Philadelphia Eagles, because I completely agree with you. I'm picking the Giants this weekend to beat the Vikings. Again, we just saw this matchup a few weeks ago, and it took a field goal at the gun for the Vikings to beat the Giants. And you you touched on it. That Vikings defense is one of the worst in the entire NFL. And the Giants won't shouldn't have to do a lot, you know, uh, offensively to kind of, you know, keep pace with that. So I, I like the Giants. I like the job that Brian Dabo is doing. And that's the question I want to ask you. Are Brian Dabo and the Giants here to stay, particularly in the NFC East, but in the NFC as a whole, he's come in and done a great job in year one with you mentioned as a, a less than ideal roster. I would assume as he continues to get more talent on that team, this Giants team is going to be scary to to face. What do you think? Yeah, a couple of things there. So before the season started, just doing various interviews in New York market or nationally, I so said the team to watch is the Giants. Nobody thinks they'll be any good. Not a very good roster. What I could tell you is they got a phenomenal coaching staff that, that Brian Dable's put together. And he probably, I have to vote in two polls next week. I'm leaning towards Dable as my coach of the year because he did the bet the most with the least. And that's very important. Where you, you look at Nick Sirianni, he's done a phenomenal job. He, he, he certainly will get votes, but they've had they have a great roster, so they should have been good. I had the Eagles with a minimum of 12 wins this season, they had 14. I mean, I had the Giants with eight. They surpassed it with nine. And remember, they rested their key starters in the last week against Philly. But, yeah, I, I would say that they know, they kind of knew who they are. Next year, they'll be more aggressive. They'll have a they'll full complement of draft picks. They'll, I, I think they'll do pretty well. And remember, they had a bad cap situation that, that uh, their front office, Joe Shane, who GM had to take over. So they've overachieved. There's no question about it. They've been a great story. And, and, and I, I know the Giant fans should be pretty happy. They love Dayball, and, and they should because he's done a phenomenal job. I mean, they have to be excited, especially over the last few years. Oh. But Adam, probably last question I got for you before we let you get up out of here. We know you're plugged into the Philadelphia Eagles hosting sure. the Inside the Birds Eagles podcast. How does Philly view their opportunity to make a run this postseason? Does it seem like it's a Super Bowl or bust type of situation with how relatively weak the NFC looks, at least in comparison to the AFC? Or how are they viewing this upcoming postseason run out there locking up the number one seed? I would say, because remember, they, they surprisingly made the playoffs at, uh, was it the 9-8, and eight, I think, last year in 2021. Jalen Hurts was the quarterback. They they got in. They got handled in Tampa. They had some injuries. It just didn't play well. But they were super aggressive, as we all know. The A.J. Brown trade, C.J. Gardner-Johnson trade, both have been home runs. So the expectation is that they should go deep in the playoffs. They've got the number one seed. Now, is it Super Bowl bust? I wouldn't go that far. Uh, the Niners, by the way, I we didn't talk about them, and maybe we'll the next time we, we do this. I, can, I just cannot believe Brock Purdy, so so called Purdy mania. It's, it's just shocking. I, I was I was at the training camp. He was barely on the roster. He was their third string quarterback only because Jimmy Garoppolo was was really not doing anything. He wasn't allowed. They were looking to move him. They wound up not moving him, and certain things happen. Who who knew? This is the beauty of football. You, sometimes you just don't know what's going to happen. And I, that 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 to me is the 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 story of, of this playoffs. Is what could the Niners do with Brock Purdy? I think it's Philly. And the Niners and the championship game in Philly, and I'd love to see that game. That that to me would be a pick 'em. That would be a smash mouth great game there. No doubt about it. I love what 49ers are doing. You mentioned Brian Dable as a coach of the year candidate. Kyle Shanahan has to have his name, at least in the sure. conversation, having losing his starting quarterback and then his backup quarterback and still having this team looking like a Super Bowl contender. Exactly. It's been pretty impressive what they've done out there in the Bay. But that's going to do it for us for this episode of Simple Question. For your boy, Scott Proctor, Matt Morris, our guy, Adam Kaplan. We'll catch you on the next episode. Thanks for watching. Feel free to check out our other videos and don't forget to smack that subscribe button down below while you're at it. Also, for more great and original content, head right over to bvmsports.com.